All right, shall we call this meeting to order? And um, we have, let's see. We're going to start talking to Toby about the mower. Yes. And how that will fit into the budget. Toby, are you going to need us to actually take a vote tonight? Because. Um, no, so the, the mower is still available and they're holding it for us. So if you guys don't have to officially do it, but you make a motion to, to pursue it, then essentially it's, no one's buying it right now. So it's okay. I don't know if you have it. It's not an agenda, right? It's not an agenda item. We said we were just, for a special meeting, you kind of have to have it for a special reason. And so the reason is to do the budget, but this is part of the budget. So we can talk about it. What we can't do is make the actual formal decision, but we could vote to tell you to go forward and then ratify the vote at the next meeting, if that's what you need. Yeah. Well, it's more if that's what you need, because somebody well, may snatch it out of thin air without making it official. <laughs> well, why, why don't you walk us through it? You sent us a whole bunch of stuff on it. Right. So, uh, wait. so I sent you the... Uh, yeah. So I sent you the specification. Um, and it's a, it has 400 and some odd hours on it. Um, it has all the details of what it is. The asking price is $130,000. And this is the one that, this is the one that Dana was used. using, and yep. it's very well cared for because they have really strict. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, and there's a warranty for it to, I think, the end of 25. That's included. Like it's full, 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 full car. I don't, I don't know the exact thing, but um, I think it says in the Which note that I sent you, it's the details. It says something about yeah, the warranty until it doesn't say what the complete I is. I don't recall seeing anything about the warranty, Toby. It's June 25. Yeah, so it's, June, it's good until June 25. Yeah, but it didn't say what it covers. It doesn't say exactly what it covers. Yeah. Oh, here it is. What year is it anyway? It's is just a year old. Yeah, so it should be a full coverage warranty, I would think. It, I guess I can get you the particulars, but um, so if you so if you're happy with the hours and the equipment, which um, the broker was happy about the equipment, the hours are not excessive for a one-year-old piece of equipment. Then the question is, how do you pay for it? So currently. Um, there's $63,500 in the heavy equipment account. Um, and if you look at the budget sheet that I sent you, um, FY24, there's $42,000 for the Western Star, which um, didn't get purchased in, in, on that line item. And there's $30,000 for the Ford F600 that never got purchased. So there's roughly $72,000 unspoken for in the capital account. Can I ask about that? Don't we eventually want to purchase those pieces of equipment that they were set aside for? Well, so so one is just that there's two li there's a double listing. So if you look there's 2023 Western Star. It's just that they, they put it in the wrong place. So they, they put the money aside, but it doesn't come into into effect until the next um, fiscal year of the 25 because it was a late delivery and we bought it in arrear. So that 42,000 that was put aside to go for the first payment didn't need to be used. Okay. And you're putting it already into the 25, uh, FY25 of that truck. So instead of the 42 that's there, you have 33,000 that's coming up next year that's going to be in the capital budget. So that 42,000 is just un spent. Unspent. And the, the Ford, again, uh, if you, that's the Ford F600 is to replace the CV international Car you got And, um, that still has not moved forward as far as no, we are. getting a, um, a price and or yeah. moving yeah. ahead. So that again is not on the table at this point. So that thirty thousand dollars can put aside for that purpose that will not be used until they move ahead in next year's budget or maybe in the year after that. 
so help me understand the capital fund, though. Don't we keep the capital fund for future expenditures? Don't we try to build that up? Well, you can. So the, the reason to have a surplus is if you all of a sudden end up with three or four vehicles that cost you money all at once, you want to use some of that to lower what those payments are in a year so that you don't have this yo-yo effect of, okay, I'm paying for one truck and I didn't put enough money away and all of a sudden I got four trucks I'm paying for it. And that capital line item just tripled or quadrupled, and you got to put that in the taxpayer bucket because that comes those bills then become due. And so, if you say, "Well, let's put fifty thousand down on this next truck," and that will keep us from then getting this big, at least for a year, it will keep it from skyrocketing up and down. So the smart move is. Um, to have some monies there where you can actually come in, you're essentially going to now purchase a greater, but that's going to be a 10 year as opposed to a five year one. So that you can spread that out, it just means it takes longer to go through that purchasing. So, that, so essentially, you, you can spend it all now and say we're fine, there will be no interest costs because you're paying cash for it. So essentially, you're going to save. Fourteen to twenty thousand dollars in interest over five years. That's one reason to do that. Um, uh, or you can take some of those monies that are either in the savings account, the, the truck account, or the monies that were put in the budget that didn't get spent, and put a combination of either the full a, a, a lease purchase for the full amount. Um, or half of the amount, or whatever, and you can decide whether you want to do it in when you take the loan, or whether you want to do it in arrears. So right now, I got two two scenarios. One is to full one hundred thirty thousand dollars. First thing you do when you take the loan, and then five years, but that's like twenty some thousand dollars in interest over time. So. The next one was to just pay a hundred that take a hundred thousand dollar loan. That almost cuts the um, interest to about fourteen thousand, and that would use a hundred thousand. I mean, it would use thirty thousand plus the twenty thousand of the of the first payment. So you're literally for fifty thousand, you get a hundred thousand dollar loan for five years and only fourteen thousand dollars of interest. Now you can do. You could do seventy thousand, or mm -hmm. um, yeah. So my suggestion is probably to target to make a fifty thousand dollar down payment and twenty thousand dollars worth of interest. I mean, the first payment. So that would be the seventy thousand that was sitting there that hasn't been used. That would leave the, the, the leave the heavy equipment fund at sixty three thousand. And it would just use up that money that was not applied to anything else. And so, it, it, again, you're now going to be um, taking a loan out for about 70000 for five years. And that would probably be less than $20,000 a year, or close to twenty a year. I can get, you know, I can get the lease document to figure out what that is. The guy I'm working with is can pr produce whatever combination we want. So that you know, that's probably the smartest thing to do is to put fifty thousand down and pay the twenty thousand. That will then use up what's already unused in the budget sitting there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's the most economical way to deal with it. And it leaves the other twenty thousand or so. No, it leaves the sixty-three thousand untouched. Okay. Leave 63 so the 72 that's sitting there now that we didn't use would be 50 plus 20, and that will then give us $70,000 carried forward. Now the other thing is, you already in your next year's budget, you already had $28,000 in Boeing. Now you can move that to capital and take the 23 out of there and reduce it to 20 or whatever into into the next year's capital budget because you'll have to pick up that next payment in 25. What are we looking at buying in the next fiscal year? What's due to be replaced? So we've already committed to ordering a new 10-wheel truck. And that's already in the weave in the, in the mix. But that, again, 
that again is one year in, in arrears, so it would be 26 before the first payment. The truck would show up, but the first payment would be in arrears, so that would be FY26. For that first payment, we have time to plan on that. But we're going to need to get a grader. Right. And another truck. No. No, right that's now. what's next. Okay. Yeah, you're, are you getting a handle on this stuff? Yeah, I, we sat down and had the conversation, Kyrie, Toby, and I, uh, the other day. I mean, I called around. I haven't heard back on the grader part yet. Right. Um, I have a buddy that works at John Deere. So I called them just to see what they had, what was available, what the pricing was. So, so the thing that always happens is um, towns that are about to buy a brand new grader and trade in their old one, you don't know that that's happened until after they vote a town meeting. So Correct. sometimes there's a, there is an opportunity that things are coming in on a trade, and you might get a 10-year-old one instead of a 28-year-old one that we have. So again, it would be talking to the you have coming kind of meeting votes whether or not there are people planning to trade in or right. get rid of their less ancient <laughs> equipment. Yep. Um, so I agree. And, and again, so that would be a, that would be a savings. I mean, you still could take a ten. Well, it would have to be a loan, and it would have to be approved by the town at town meeting because it's more than five years. But we'd have to do the research and go talk to salesmen and. and Vendors and say, okay, what, what do you got, think you got coming and what is it? And, yeah. You know, um, and again, so the problem is as everything starts to end, add up, they get too close together and then you're paying a lot every year. Right. That's a problem. Um, the only other thing that, again, the only other possibility is in order to shift how many trucks are and equipment is in each year, you might want to trade one in earlier and change that, that frequency. I mean, we literally have four trucks. We really, we really only deal with three, but then we have the, the spare that we've always had. But now we've got five people plowing in the wintertime, so we need that truck. And we don't need it in the summer as much, but we still need that piece of equipment. And so if we're trading in the 2014 to the new, 2024-5 plow truck. And the 2017 is going to be the spare. So essentially it's a little bit more recent. Yep. Um, so again, um, I can I can get the loan, the lease agreement any way you guys want, I'm just whatever you decide. Um, other questions for Toby? Jordan, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, all right. I mean, I'm, yeah. I would just like it to be the most economical choice. So we only have our capital, the extra money we have, it's only that 68,000 right now? 72. 72, okay. So you think it would be better to do the, the well, essentially, that's essentially you have just money, you have money set aside that he's not it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. it's, it's going to carry forward. So essentially, this is your opportunity to take care of it. I mean, you can also put it in arrears for another year, but that's going to put it in the next year and make it another mm -hmm. month even larger. No, I was leaning towards outright, but I wouldn't want to drain the <clears throat> capital fund. So, Jamie, you got questions? I missed the first part, but I think I'm up to speed and nothing specific right now. Okay. So, um, yeah, so if you guys give me permission to hold it together, then we can work on the, on the, you know, the process of where you want to. And I'll put, I'll put together the $70,000 down payment, mm -hmm. I mean, the $70,000 relief. With the five-year loan, oh, the, and the first payment, and then a five-year loan for the rest. Right. Does that sound good to everybody? And we need Remember, it. we had 28 in the budget. We do have 28 in the budget, so this will save on that. We'll save us on that. Right, but the second year of the payment will have to be whatever yeah. it turns out to be. It. That's oh. So it might be 20. 19 instead of 28, so you yeah. might be able to save like, yeah, a few thousand dollars in that line. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So what would happen is you'd come back to us with a contract? 
Well, what I'll do is I'll, con I'll, con uh, um, I'll contact the lease company that I sent you the copies of and yep. redo it so essentially you have the whole. Okay. The whole. Um, and we'll, we'll have to sign it, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. So we could do that at the next meeting. Okay. Um, uh, just one question: we, What's the what's the rule for when we have to put it before the voters? and when we can just decide to do a major capital expenditure? So anything, uh, so you can, uh, within a five year period, you can do whatever you want. The select the board is, oh, yeah. That's it's a five year limit. Okay. Um, the reason we're going to the, the, um, the, the greater for 10 years, it has to go to the town to be approved. Right. So we, you, you can make motions and take care of things up to five years. That's right. I forgot. Okay. And, and there's that, no cap on how can, much. I mean, you can still go out there and ask them to approve it, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, as long as we, I think the last two or three trucks, we just had the select board decide that's what we needed, and yeah. it's you know there hasn't been any pushback. Okay. That's really Great. I think you've got what you need then okay. to go forward, and I'll put it on the next agenda. That right. we'll. Um, okay. we'll and I'll get a copy of the full warranty as well, so that you guys will get. Okay. Great. Great. Thanks for all that work, Toby. Oops. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Toby, two phone calls. Okay. Are you sticking around, or are you? Do um, you have anything else particularly for me? Not at the moment. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, I expect we, I hope we'll get to the highway budget, but I don't know how far we'll get today. But okay. it will be fine. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Tony. Thanks. Yeah. Have a good night. Have fun. Thank Have you. Fun. Oh, you, that's right. You're going away tomorrow too. Yeah. Yeah. I got to run before the snow gets deep. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're late already. Um. So. Kari, help me out here. I think what we should do is take the budget that was um, in your folders and start, let's just take it section by section okay. and take a good look at each section. And, or actually, no, I'm going to take that back. Kari, we should talk about your wage proposal first. Okay. And two, we did have, we had been talking, we think there might be a place to squeeze some money out of the highway budget too. Really? Well, okay. We can use our segment grant this year, and then we have money for next year, but it's thirty-four thousand. And if we kind of focused our energies on fixing those roads, that so we can get the reimbursement back. But so what? let's do the wages, <laughs> and then we'll go to that, and and then we'll start through this. And thank you for doing this. Yeah. So absolutely. Kari sent us a memo. So yeah. So obviously, as we talked about last time, most of the increases, in a lot of the budget overall is. Uh, is with people, right? Um, so we took a real hard look at office staffing. We can discuss. Did you zoom up there? I don't know. Oh no! What happened? <laughs> but I just want to before. Oh, that's just okay. my that was my mouse. All right, just making sure. Um, <laughs> we can talk about um, staff on the highway department next, but but um, focusing on the uh, office staff, I think the key change that's in this memo, this scenario, that um, I wanted to share with you is, is to have the town administrator serve as the treasurer and then support that with a part-time bookkeeper. And I, I think that that's workable. I, you know, I had a good conversation on Friday with Sandra about that. Um, you know, she believes that can be done. You know, you know, part of it is that things happen, of course, and like the year that happened just this past year was very different for the treasurer, just as it was for everybody else. So when there are unique things that come up and research needs to be done, that places an extra burden on the treasurer role that you wouldn't ask a bookkeeper to do. A bookkeeper is just going to be doing data entry and, and you know, certain routine tasks over and over again. And so anyway, that, those are just you know, some concerns because I mean, I really, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't know if I'm recommending, I guess I'm recommending this, but uh, I'm, just, I'm just being transparent. I don't fully understand the ramifications of it. 
Um, but what it does is it, it, it reduces a, what's in there as a full-time position to a part-time position. And the savings on that is partially in wages. What I didn't, for this memo breakdown, is the savings on the benefit side. And that's significant because I want Sandra to verify this, but the, um, you know, all of the benefits that we offer are, are cost money, but the medical insurance is is a really big chunk. Mm -hmm. And I believe in this in, in our budget is uh, that uh, treasurer role is in a, as a um, on the family plan for medical, and so the combination of, of the town paying ninety percent of the premium, um, which is like twenty five thousand um, dollars plus. Uh, the HRA contribution that we make because if you don't know we, we have this high, de high deductible not even that high but we have a basically the town contributes the full amount of the health reimbursement account so you put those two things together we're talking around $28,000 is just the medical portion of, of what, what the town pays so for one person for, for, one, person. for one person on the family plan yeah so the, so long story short I think that you know the the number that I presented in terms of wages will actually be quite a bit bigger, more than, and, um, and you know, there's some other line items on there. But by next week, we'll, we can um, lay that out, out in more detail. But so that's sort of the big, um, the big piece of that. I, I, as I laid out, um, we we're trying to get a, a cost of living increase, for, at least a cost of living increase for every position, including town clerk. We are also working with Barbara, frankly, on what um, her preference is uh, for full time. She wants to retain 40 hours a week. And I'll, I'll be honest, I, I think if we were designing it from scratch, you wouldn't necessarily go that route. Um, but Barbara is so capable and knows so much about how this town operates, we might as well take full advantage of what she brings to the table and, and, and set it up that way, that's my opinion. Um, do, do you think that would free up some of your town administrator duties so you could do more of the treasurer work? If it would have to. It would have to. Yeah. So, so yeah. for example, I think she would continue to play a pretty, pretty big role with the select board doing, mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, all the follow-up that happens after these meetings. She is, you know, even even the same night she's emailing people she and, <laughs> and like, here's what the decision was, we need this and that, and here you can do this, and all those sorts of things because um, I, would, I would be focused on road commissioner and treasurer mm -hmm. to a large extent. And one of the notes you might notice in there is this this model does require a, a foreman and someone who's capable of performing in that role. Mm -hmm. So I'll stop there, see what um, thoughts you have, concerns. Do you want me to oh. continue? Uh, well, let's see, anybody? So wanna? that's the decrease in 16,000 projected. Uh, Let's see. Um, I, in my memo, I think it says 28,000. Okay. Is that what you're seeing? Oh, increase, increase, yeah. Treasurer went from, you had 49,250 to a bookkeeper at 31,200. Right. And again, that is just for wages. It does not factor in any of the benefits or payroll taxes of that sort of thing. Which is almost equal. Yeah. To, to yeah, that. it is equal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Jamie, you got any questions here? Are you with us? I'm with you. Uh, I don't have any questions. I think it looks like the, the good path forward in this section. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I guess the only question I really have about the bookkeeper position is... Um, I think you'd, you'd, you'd mentioned that you'd spent time talking to Sandra about it and the $30, $30 an hour is attractive enough to get somebody to... That was her opinion. She yeah. suggested that number. I already had it in mind yeah. um, just based on previous conversations, but she thought that that would... She's also clear that that's... I mean, the labor market is what it is, and yeah. bookkeepers are as hard to come by as anyone. Yeah. So, I don't know how far to go down this next thread, but um, she did start thinking, and she has been thinking about her transition quite a bit, and 
you know, can that be as a, as a transition or as a permanent arrangement? Could that be contracted out at something that's affordable? And yeah, so that's something I would like to explore as well. Yeah, I guess that's that's kind of where I was heading. Um, it seems like uh, Sandra's the only one with intimate knowledge of town finances and its bookkeeping. Uh, that's that's in our arm's reach, and I and I'm just curious about what the what's realistic. You know, what 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 will we actually realize? I mean, we can we can talk about trying to find somebody for the position or, or creating the position, but will we actually find it? And then what does it look like if we really do need somebody to perform those services to make sure that the town administrator and everybody else can can serve their roles um, and what does it look like if we have to go to a professional services or accounting firm to to fulfill that um, but um, but I guess if that if everybody's comfortable with that dialogue and the numbers associated with it and it provides enough room to seek out those services in the future if we need to yeah, yeah. it is what so, it is so it's something I'd like to explore more I I'll say two things about it. One is I, I have the concern about filling the position, whether it's full time, part time, right. and, and any, any, just, yeah. just as a concern. Um, and the other thing is that Sam, Sandra's recommendation was explore it with Nemrick, and yeah. Wendy, Wendy Wilton specifically, um, because she believes there's an efficiency to be had there. I mean, Wendy did it for us. Wendy works with ne um, the Nemrick system every day, knows our particular situation. And the, and Sandra's opinion is she could she could if she's available um, to do it on a, on a transition or or a more regular basis would be much faster much more efficient than anyone we could hire a train up. Hmm. So if you know some, something worth exploring. So will you be doing that before the next meeting? So we'll have those that information. I'm going to try. Wendy's um, I guess a waiver oh. part of the week, although. She'll be what we're going to talk to her in the morning. We do payroll. Yeah. And then she's going to be out in the afternoon. Yeah. And, and part of where she's going to be is at, at a training that I'm attending on Wednesday. So, oh, so if I need to, I'll corner her. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to do my best to, to nail as much of this down as I can, or at least take the next steps before next week. Other questions about this piece of it? Okay. Do you, you have more to say, right? about this that was all on the office staffing side oh well then let me ask you uh, about delinquent tax collector how oh, are you envisioning yeah, that piece go ahead so i didn't realize this Sandra pointed this, this out so by statute this is a separate function and that's why it always shows up on the budget uh, um, separate item. And, and on the, um, the financial statements as a separate item because it is something separate. It's also often combined with the bookkeeper function and helps sort of round out the hours. But if we're thinking of it as part time, um, then we will need to um, figure out how to get that work done. Um, I will say that uh, Sandra volunteered that she, this is something that she would continue to do for some period of time. She would not, uh, if, she, if we wanted her to, she could continue. So that, that would be helpful. It's also, I mean, it's budgeted at eight hours a week, or yeah, eight hours a week, and that's what we've been paying. However, m my understanding is it's the work is really um, condensed or it's seasonal. Mm -hmm. And so there may be alternative arrangements that we could recruit somebody from the town and say. Yeah, I noticed you knocked a thousand dollars off of it. And that was her recommendation that, it, that we could, that would probably be attractive enough to somebody. And it's, it doesn't. It it doesn't sound like it requires someone with um, intimate knowledge of our, you know, of, of how to, you know, do bookkeeping or financial work. Um, they need to be organized. They need to be diligent. They need to have a. Uh, 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 they need to be per persuasive, I guess. They need to be a good for people person. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So that was the intro. What was? Did you have a specific question about it? That that was I just wasn't sure how who you were envisioning would do that. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that would be looking for somebody else to, to be determined. Yeah, okay. I think um, it could be Sandra, it could is, be Wendy. No, Wendy couldn't do no, that. No, Wendy could not do no. that. Okay. It had to be someone you know here here in the town. I think 
Um, mm. And I think we would have some time to figure that out, was my sense, between you know March being sort of slow season for this work, although there's some, um, and, and Sandra being willing to stay on mm -hmm. to do that portion. But that it would be something we need to figure out. And what's the bottom line? How much money do we save? Did you calculate it with the payroll and all that, if we went with this scheme? I, mean, I kind of hate to put it out there, but um, without Sandra verifying it, but somewhere around 64. So three percent of the budget, that, which is kind a of good thrilling. Chunk. It's just kind of <laughs> it's down to a ten percent increase. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, there, right? that's, not that's not nothing. That's a good start. It's not nothing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't think we need to act on this tonight. We'll talk about it at the next meeting. Are we ready to move on? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want to talk about the road? position? Well, so I, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's very preliminary. This is actually something that Jamie and I talked about on our way back from the Dan meeting on Friday. But we, we are operating on the assumption that we need five drivers on our highway department and we need a fourth. And so we, we have five currently, two are part time, um, but we don't have the foreman. Um, well, and then backing up, Donnie and, and Toby and I met on Thursday, and Donnie confirmed what we had been thinking. This is based in part on the research that I did with neighboring towns. And we really ought to be thinking about the foreman position as $30 an hour, probably as a, as a minimum, and in, in order to attract someone that can do it. And so, um, and so that was okay to start um, putting the word out. Um, and so we were preparing to advertise. I let the, the current road crew know that we were doing that, and one of the um, employees said that that might change things for them, that they're interested in discussing it more. That, so they were going to explore it with them. If there were a way to hire internally for the foreman position, and we could have a flexible arrangement with the two part-timers, so that they would, in the winter hours, the winter season, they would be flexible enough that they, all five of them could drive on, on a snowy day when we really needed them. Then, from a budget point of view, we could eliminate an entire position, which would really be a big deal because then we're, we're talking about hours, we're talking about a significant amount of overtime, the medical insurance and all the rest. And so I'm gonna do my best to explore that, um, but I think it's gonna take more than a week to kind of nail that. Partly, partly because Toby's away for the next two weeks and he'd be involved. But that, that's sort of the germ of it. And it, it kind of relates to what we talked about and it relates to what Jamie and I talked about as well. And I'm sure other people have thought about it. I don't know if that's been part of your discussions at all with the, with the crew over the last year. But. Oh, as far as internally? Yeah. Yeah, and the part-timers and how long will the... I think one part-timer is... Half I don't know how long out. he's gonna, you know, stay on, and then the other part timer. I don't think. I think he would stay with us, but I think too he'd also be okie dokie to move with Mosey somewhere else. You know, having a, a full time in lieu of two part time, but then that would create a winter problem. Yeah. It, I think it's a good idea, starting with that. I mean, you you lose help. It's just kind of one of the things that happens. Yeah. But I think the idea of it, especially hiring somebody that's already functioning in the position, mm -hmm. not the foreman position, but as a crew member, I, I think they are gonna know what they need more than somebody outside, necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think that's a good idea. Okay, well, we'll explore it and I'll report back as quickly as I can. Yeah, I, I think that okay, if I could add add to that, you know, I think we we briefly kind of had some conversations about hiring in, internally, um, and um, and there's n no real objection other than we need to make sure that whoever's going to be in that position is going to be able to direct direct the crew and handle the 
the nuance that comes with that um, and it just doesn't turn into you know various forms of triangulation and disengagement and that sort of thing i mean it's a small crew we can ill afford to lose and try to find other other folks so you know i think um i share the kind of observation you know that there's there's an obvious obvious need for kind of somebody to take the leadership role around scheduling and, and prioritizing of work and that sort of thing. And, and it's great to have somebody uh, in-house who knows uh, where everything is in town and, and sort of the more nuanced stuff. But um, with, with the workload that, that the town administrator has and all of the other kind of soft management stuff that's going to come with the grants and and finances and capital planning and that sort of thing. Great that we can kind of take that off the the, the plate of a, of a road foreman, but it really puts a lot of emphasis on making sure that person can kind of lead, lead the crew and do the work. Yeah, but, um, and part of, sorry, Jamie, that Donnie and I had talked about, and I think you and Donnie and Toby have, but um, working with either the crew or whatever identified people, between now and like March, and really coming up, which is something that we had hoped to do this summer before the floods, on a comprehensive plan. Like these we're are the roads we're going to hit. We've got the grant from this year that we got a waiver to do it next year, so we can resubmit it in May. The guy will come out and or not. Um, we can do that work. We get the reimbursement. We can submit the second grant. But having uh, you know, because I think that's one of the areas that was challenging for them is. There's 80 something miles of road, and like, what do we? And if we have like a clear cut, it makes it easier on you, it makes it easier on the foreman to be like, okay, guys, this is the plan that we came up with way back when, and this is what we got to knock out this week and next week, and, and so on. So that would provide some structure to um, a foreman to be able to implement, you know, be less kind of willy nilly and trying to do yeah. this or do that. Jamie, you had something? Oh, just, I'm in full support. I, you know, I was chatting with Kari Friday and looking at the budget, thinking, wow, we're, we're adding the foreman as a whole new position, but we already have five drivers in the winter. So, I, I mean, I think this is something we've talked about for a while and, and the logical direction to go. Okay. All right. Well, Kari, you said you may not have this information next week, but we are looking at finalizing the budget. I guess we'll have that conversation next week. We'll just have to, you'll have to give us your best, uh, whatever, projection. Oh, I will do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's just hard because uh, there's a number of moving pieces here. I know. Well, can Donnie help you with things that with Toby gone? I, I mean, I don't really know. Yeah, potentially, you want to do a job interview? Sure. <laughs> as long as it's not. <laughs> you enjoy those, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll be in touch. Yeah. Okay. Let me know. Okay. Great. And you had some things. Oh, with those grants. Um, Good. What grants? So these are the municipal. Oh, the grant for road, whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm not good with that. The ones but that we have to put in every year for the ones that we put in every year. Assistance. So we had twenty thousand for this year, which we weren't able to use, um, and there is a waiver, so we can use it again next fall or next summer between like May and September, October, and then we've also been granted fourteen thousand. So it's thirty-four thousand total, which in theory. I would think we could kind of reduce a mere, perhaps material cost because there would be some reimbursement and focus on the segments. They don't, the areas that get worked on include sections of the road that aren't directly connected to a watershed, um, but the overall, you know, you get a, a reimbursement for each section. So. That would be a way to pull in thirty-four thousand that we don't. Right, but don't we get an, another grant next year? 
So we have so we have the twenty thousand from this year. We get to use next year, and we have fourteen thousand for next year. Because we didn't use them this year, correct? Yes. Oh, so I the see. Twenty thousand so rolls over, and then we have an additional fourteen. Fourteen. Okay. And then, as I had talked to you about for the year following, you know, the next year that we can be looking at submitting for structures, grants, and things to do some of the larger culverts, not next year, but the year after. So um, would you then reduce something in this budget? Yes, that I would think that we might be able to, like, reduce some of the material costs. That's what you were saying, like the sand or something. Yes, that, you know, the things that we would typically use because okay. we'd be getting that reimbursement back and then just really focusing I mean, a priority we're going to have to probably have in the summer is we're really going to have to start removing ash trees that are along the roadway because they're going to start falling soon, and that's a huge, huge project, too. So um, we had talked about getting together with all the and the guys and really kind of coming up with the plan for the summer now, picking out those road segments, getting, you know, the... The current grant can probably, he had already looked at it and it looked good, so we can resubmit for those same roads, but we can pick the additional roads and kind of map out what the summer's going to look like, including like tree removal and those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Kari, if we were to do that, rather than reducing line items in the budget, would we add something on the income side? Uh, it sounds like it. Yeah. 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 It would, uh, during the net down, but we would spend the money, we're just, we're just, so it would be 20000 more than we were expecting in income. Yeah. It's the way it would work. Well, but we're getting the fourteen next year. Right? I mean, that is expected, right? That is expected. So it's 20000 so 20, unexpected 000. that yeah. we would get. I'm going to need to go over with you exactly where it is. Okay. Here, <laughs> where it we is. We can do that after. Yes. But you're saying it's, it's 20 Mm-hmm. That's great. Okay. Thank you. And so I guess that brings up another thing for me as we're going through the budget with what hasn't been transparent to me like through this process is we've got lump sums for material and um, we, we don't generally have things broken out relative to like capital improvements or because for lack of a better term to to the roads like things that are project based or would otherwise be like special grants that are coming in that are outside the scope of our general our general permit grant that we get from the state, just like just based on whatever mileage we have. Um, and I think that's an area where it'd be nice to kind of start to see some of these things broken out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if we have the ability to, to, to do that because of the way that we have things structured in like Nemrick. I know sometimes we can't really push we, we can't just like create more line items because we have specific accounts for things um, uh, or, or coding for things uh, essentially in, in the budget. But if there were a, like a supplemental document that's tracking what the projects are, what the estimated material costs are, and what percentage of that is, it is of the, of the overall material budget. Um, I think the tree, the tree removal is a good example. Um, I have a hard time saying, okay, well, this is what we're going to budget for tree removal without looking at like what what are the estimated hours for something like that, and does it does it make sense? You know, there's there's a whole bunch of roadside maintenance that didn't get done this year mm -hmm. because of the weather and because of the mower situation, um, and the mower only covers a portion of it. You know, so if we're looking at a massive tree removal campaign. And the backlog of work, does it make sense to lump that up, like lump that all together and contract it out um, to to a service that could likely go through it much more efficiently, deal with the deal with the ash trees, but then also deal with a backlog in in tree maintenance or roadside tree maintenance that that likely needs to be done too. Um, so, you know, making those discretionary decisions is hard when it's just big chunks of money towards mm -hmm. materials and so it sounds like and I that's think a job. Oh, I was going to say, Sandra, I think can pull out specific, I think she could pull out how much we spent on sand, how much we spent on culverts, how much we spent on fuel, how much we spent, I think she could tease out those things and I think it would be helpful because it is kind of um, unclear, you know, you have like this big huge sure. thing and it's like things are, and even internal mechanisms within, I mean there was um, 
you know, they always kept track of what they were doing, but like the FEMA level of documentation, I put this length of this culvert that was purchased at this place and this section of road at this location, you know, like having very clear documentation of what, yeah, happens where, yeah, because sure. then you can know what you need. Yeah, so that's a longer project. It is a longer so project. It's you sitting down with maybe Sandra, maybe Kari. Yeah. And maybe the mm -hmm. foreman. <laughs> but I think yeah. now, I don't know, did you start that? I think they're keeping track of how much sand they're taking out now. So actually, I, yeah, I talked to them the other day about, I think that's a pretty good idea to keep track. They actually said it to me. But I think they need to start keeping track of what goes out and what comes in. You know, because just saying, okay, we need 3,000 yards. Well, there's a lot more than 3,000 yards sitting there. You know, some winters you're going to use 5,000. Some winters you're going to use 1,000. You know, it, it really depends. But I think keeping track of that so you have a better understanding of, okay, well, we need this amount mm -hmm. going forward and have something to kind of base it off, not just saying, well, we need 3,000 more yards. Yeah, and it's going to be it's, it's going to be weather dependent. You know, weird Correct. years are going to be you know, very different material consumption wise, and um, and and that's why you know I think it it it's going to be helpful for us to have that information. You know, sand's an easy one, and winter times an easy time to think about it. But like gravel is a way squishier situation, and you know if we're never going to be able to budget for a summer like we had this year. Um, but there's you know, it's pretty easy to say that like these are your five projects for the next five years and the amount of money that needs to be set aside for materials and culverts, you know, that I would think that we would have, I would put culverts in a different, uh, a different category than, um, than just your general grading material that you're going to have for, for road maintenance through mud season or something like that. Um, and it'd be nice to see like what those, what those caches are, you know, separately. Um, and I think it's gonna come down to hours too. You know, we're gonna have to, <laughs> we're gonna have to decide like what we want, what we want them to spend time doing um, relative to the scope of those projects. Okay, you ready to move on to the budget itself and take it section by section mm -hmm. and talk about things we might change. So let's start with the select board section. Donnie, do you have a copy of your budget? No, oh. I'm just reading. I'm going off Oh, hands. all right. Oh, yeah, because you don't, this won't I think if I look at too much paper, I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I'm not sure about the best way to do it. Shall I just open it up. Does anybody have any comments on that section or questions or observations? Okay, let me take it like this. Select board stipends. Now that was raised, it was a thousand, supposed to be a thousand dollars each. It was raised at town meeting on the floor, as you recall. It was actually removed originally. In that <laughs> well, yes, there was that too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Barbara McAndrews, I think, is the one who, yeah. who added it back in. During yeah, the, you know, and then and Barry raised, raised it. <clears throat> no, that was Barry Bernstein, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, do you want to leave that where it is? You guys think that's a fair thing to do? Sometimes have a higher one for the chair and lower ones for everybody else. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, let's not worry about that right now. Um, I, I think I think it's fair to leave it where it is. I mean, I appreciate kind of the altruistic approach, but I know I've certainly uh, sacrificed uh, priorities this this year, um, and those priorities have costs, and that's a pretty incremental dent in the costs. Okay. And if you want to give it to the dam fund, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, recording secretary I notice has been reduced and I'm not sure who did that or exactly why. Maybe based on the number of hours Rose is actually spending. I don't know the history of that. Okay. 
um, credit card fees we can't do much about. Professional fees, I still don't know what this is. <laughs> I emailed Sandra today, I haven't heard back. You haven't heard back. So uh, I, I'd like to hear from Sandra because legal fees is the next line. So it's not the lawyer. I don't know what, it, what that is and I notice it's not in this budget because we don't know what it is. The audit we can't do much about. Mm -hmm. The website is what it is. I will note that education and training is $800 just for us. There's another line item for education and training for staff and then probably another one, I'm not sure about this, in the highway budget for the road crew and the road floor. So um, I'm thinking we could probably knock that down quite a bit. I know I've taken a couple of classes with VLCT and they cost $10 each and I did it over the internet. So I didn't even have to travel. Um, maybe some of you want to go to some things. I don't know. What do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's good to have uh, a budget in there. Um, I don't know how many things actually cost substantial money. It seems like most of the trainings or courses or things that I've done are either free or low charge. Yeah, like well, um, what would it have cost? Are, do, those do you remember the more? one that was this fall where all the select boards go and they all meet each other and none of us went to it because we were all exhausted? And also employed oh, full time doing thing? other things. I mean, that's one of my biggest gripes about the VLTC. I don't have a better recommendation, but like the. the that everything's at night. Everything, morning. well, everything's just <laughs> yeah. during the day, during yeah. the work week. And I mean, yep. it, right. how. How are we supposed to get to those? <laughs> Even when they're on Zoom, I mean, hide in the closet and uh, book myself That's out. True. But you know, it's it's um, I, again, I don't. I, I don't like bringing up problems without solutions, but uh, that's that's a real problem. But they're also very inexpensive. So yeah, the eight hundred dollars, unless we're trying to compensate for mileage for an entire group, but even then. Yeah, I, I noticed this year we've used one hundred and seventy dollars in education and training, and I don't have any clue how we got that high. Having spent twenty dollars myself, has anybody else done anything? I went to the emergency oh, you... management conference. I don't know how much that. Cost. Barbara took care of it. Mm, okay, so maybe it was um, some things you did. Okay. And I've done both things, but they're all free online, so that hasn't cost. The VLCT town fair looks like it's 100 ish for a day or 200 for two days. Yeah, so if we all went to that, there's our that easily, that's easily our 800. Well, I, and I don't, I don't know that maybe we all need to go to them. So I think if we drop that to three hundred bucks or no, uh, I just thought of something else though. That's where Kari would get his, wasn't it? Or no, or no, he has the staff. One, you'd right? be in staff. Yeah. Okay. I used ours thinking of Kari. That's why. Yeah. So okay. I think that's fine, Jordan. Knock it to three hundred. You're thinking and see what happens. Yeah. You guys okay yep. with that? Okay. You got that, Kari? Select board training decreased by 500. Yep. Yeah. I think I had aspirations to do more, but just, yeah, time wise. I think that's happened to <laughs> all of us. <laughs> yeah. Like when. Yeah. Um, copier, these other things, uh, mileage reimbursement, I think that's probably about right. Judging from expenditures, it doesn't look like we can do much about the other things. So mileage reimbursement is what exactly? Um, well, if Barbara goes to the bank, I suppose she can get her mileage reimbursed. Under or this select board though, or is this for overall? I don't know why it's in the select board account. The okay. things we oh. have under that are things like when John is around with Worcester, okay. sometimes he'll put that mileage on. Toby has done mileage reimbursement. Barbara did it for something she had to drive really far for. Okay. Interesting. That should probably be moved to general office. There well, is not a mileage thing there. In the select yeah, board because, yeah, I was told there wasn't one for, because I've driven around for animals. And I've driven <laughs> many miles on my car. I mean, I feel like that makes sense, especially road commissioner should. That's up to you all. Yeah, but that's past and done but I mean, it, it might not be a bad thing at some point to decide what 
what counts for mileage reimbursement and what doesn't and how we decide. Sounds like we do need a discussion for that. I don't think the animal control officer gets, I'm not sure. If I don't think mileage. that, um, I don't know that Wilson ever did, but we should because it can be a substantial amount of driving and well, he's got a thousand dollars for expenses, so I, I guess so I think that's that. okay. Yeah, because I know Belton never did, but it is. It can be a lot of driving around. Well, maybe we just leave that as is, and that's something to be researched a little bit. Oh, the three hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess I I didn't catch whether or not. So, if anybody else submits mileage as office staff, does it come out of that budget, or do we need to have one added to? No, office well, staff. See, I think that it should be because I didn't think like select board members got reimbursed. Oh. So it seems like it should be added the general. And oh then no, they don't have that. We would need to no, determine. That's the one okay. So we can move it if we. Yeah, you know, driving to Lindenville for whatever road training thing that we did or it yeah. yeah, it seems most appropriate to move it into the general town. Okay. Move to office staff. But shall we just um, level fund it for now? Looks like there's been nothing. I'm looking at the report yeah. as of October, nothing had been spent out of that budget this year. But that I think I did. But I don't know why it's not in there. I thought I did it. Submitted it in October. Hmm. Okay. Well. Okay. Anything else on select board? All right. Let's look at town clerk. Am I looking at the wrong one here? Oh no. Okay. So, town clerk really should be fifty-seven twenty-eight for her cola. Yeah, we'll get that changed. Um, okay. And same with the assistant town clerk. She should be at um, 55723. Oh, she's assistant town clerk slash administrative assistant. Right. right. Yeah. So slash, this is just that slash, portion. Slash, slash. Yeah. Anything else anybody want to question in that one? Or well, the other ones are fixed, like the land record books is a fixed cost. Yeah, no, I think. It's not a fixed cost. Oh. Depends on how many books and how much paper I have to buy. I don't decide though. When I run out of books, I need to buy more books. That's statue. Yeah, <clears throat> and, and you thought about that number and yeah. it makes no, sense to you. Given the last couple of years, I think that's a solid estimate. Okay. All right, can we move on to listers? Again, there's not much, not much we can do there. That pretty much is what it is. Uh, Are you making noises like just to yeah. have something to say, or <laughs> maybe? Well, one thing I mean that's significant is the professional assessor, and I appreciate that we've got it in there as a a partial because it'll ease the blow if we go to full time for the following year, which presumably we're heading in that direction. So just pointing that out. Yeah, thank you. You're right. Yeah. It, it won't yeah. be quite the sticker shock in the next budget. And we don't know whether somebody will run to fill Wilson's slot. If nobody does, then we may have to hire somebody sooner rather than later. Well, two people ran for new slot last year, right? It was Stephen. Grant Ornstein. Yeah. So maybe. Well, was that was that relative to the changing in the certification? I, I know that Jan and John were both saying that one of the big changes is that uh, state requirements for being certified as a lister is going up. So we likely will either need to consider, you know, compensating people for maintaining the state required training, or do what everybody else is doing and hire it out to a profession, uh, professional appraiser. Yeah, I think, I think Jan was suggesting we might want to hire somebody toward the end of next year. Mm -hmm. Well, the state might be making changes anyway that we won't have in this future. I know, because aren't, weren't they talking about taking it over? Taking the stairs away together so we don't even know. Well, the state does such a great job. <laughs> <laughs> 
fabulous. Yeah. Okay. So you okay with leaving the six thousand in there? Everybody yes, else. We don't this? know what a lot yeah. can be changing in the next year with that whole thing. Yeah. Okay. All right, town administrator. Um, let me see. And then we have the 20. Wait a minute. How does this mesh with the town administrator assistant? Isn't that line would go away altogether? That, yeah, okay. So that's what I thought. The treasurer section would change. Since we're, we're lumping her job together. Yeah, so yeah. the next version of this, you will see, it will look more like that. We'll okay. Some savings in there. Okay. So that is what it is. Um, then the town treasurer will drop down to 31,200. Right. An assistant town, oh yeah, okay. So there's a little bit, of, that'll be fine. Um, moving along, auditor and town report. Tegan and I looked at that a bit again today and that seems to be about right. There. Delinquent tax collector may drop by a thousand. Postage. Everybody go buy your forever stamps now because they're going up when? <laughs> Next January week. 23. Two weeks. <laughs> oh, so what is it going up to? 68, so it's not horrific. What is it currently? 66. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot when you're mailing something to the whole town. Yeah. Right. Well, it just went up. Yeah. Uh, this year. Yeah. Didn't it go up earlier this year too? Yes, yeah. in June or July. Yeah. Elections postage. That one. because we're going to have a couple of elections, right? We have three elections, and it costs about a thousand bucks to <clears throat> mail things to all the voters in town. Yeah. Why? Why are we having three? That's the. The presidential. Oh, the primary. The primary. State primary. Yeah. And then November. Okay. All right, let's take a look at general office then. Um, Tegan, you and I talked about some of these things today too. And this might change if we go to Nimrick for more, um, more contracting again. Yeah. So this might go up. It could go up, but that way would be taken I out of the book. Taken from the treasurer's salary spot for this. Okay. What, what about Nimrick support disaster recovery? Yeah. Well, she's basically doing the trick. So usually contract services is what we agree upon ahead of time they'll do and support disaster recovery is anytime there are other issues. Wait, um, could, could we stop for a sec? Donnie, you're not up to speed on this. I hear you guys whispering about this. Maybe we should explain to Donnie what Nimrick is. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. Did so you hear the commercials on WDEV <laughs> when they, they have commercials on? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't. <laughs> um, when we didn't have treasure, uh, we contracted with them. They help municipalities do all sorts of things, including financial stuff. Okay. Um, and we have someone we work with, Wendy, who even now has done our payroll the whole time. I've been here, even though Sanders has back, she said she would not do payroll. So Wendy does payroll. She was basically our treasurer last year. She knows our budget as well as any non callous person can know it. Um, so that's. That's that. But Nimrick offers all sorts of other services and stuff to the towns. They, they offer all kinds of accounting and financial services. Yeah, and they, have, they developed the accounting system that we use. So and all the modules that And their mission is to serve us. It's, I mean, it's, it's yeah. a great resource. Yeah. So they really the programs we use with calculating taxes, with doing dogs, with doing our grin lists, with all the office stuff, it's all in software that they have created for Vermont towns. Hmm. So Wendy Wilton, you keep hearing us mention her. She's, yes. she's our Nemric person who's okay. been helping us. <laughs> so, so in other words, every, every year there's some level of support that they're offering. It's not always disaster. Yeah. Okay. And then okay. COTS is our the online land records. So that's the thing that allows people to look at their data from their living room if they want to or a few things like that. It's another safe place to have it in case anything happens with physical records. IT support and consulting is RV Tech. They help us with all our tech decisions. You talk to Holland. Um, yep. Um, yeah, that's, that's them. Okay. Doing my email there. Doing your email, <laughs> yeah. They do a lot of just email, but I oh, feel yeah. like this year has been a lot of email. <laughs> so, Tegan, you really bumped up the education and training thing here. 
You think Kari's gonna? Well, I, like if I go to one or two conferences, which I'm still learning a lot. I was planning to. Barbara has never been to the Clerks and Treasurers Conference, and I thought she ought to go. In fact, I almost made her go this year. We're gonna, we we're both gonna go. It's gonna be in Montpelier. We weren't gonna have to pay for a hotel, and we we're both gonna go. And then the hotel in Montpelier was no longer. Hmm. Um, but I figured if Kari goes to one and Barbara goes to one and I go to one, I, I don't know that we'll use it, and you can probably bump it down to. Nine hundred or a thousand, if you wanted to. I know that's a small change, but if you you could do that. Can can we back up to the IT support contractor oh, sure. and the consultant? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, what's the difference between the uh, consulting and the uh, support contract? The support contract is just like their annual their annual contracted amount for a certain amount of support relative to our existing infrastructure, right? And then... So Sandra split all these out, and she crunched numbers her way, and I haven't had a chance to talk to her about how she landed on each of these. Um, so that's what I'm assuming. It's one is what we agree on ahead of time for their monthly stuff, and that includes a certain number of hours of presentation, right. and then the other one is when things arise and we need trainings and we have issues. Okay. So consulting is, oh, training is, is other kinds of training other than IT, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It might be nice to see. Yeah, it might be nice. Well, uh, if there's a way of breaking out, yeah, that, the support contract, you know, that's that's their their maintenance kind of contract with us, and it comes with a certain amount of hours, and, and I'm sure we blow through it, and things come up, and uh, or there are more acute needs, but you know, with like the added cost of the um, email services and, and that sort of thing, like if if that were in a different bucket. And other IT expenses, like if we have other software expenses, um, that even if we're going through that, it would be nice to to kind of see those broken out separate separately. If they're being lumped into either of those, it, it would be nice to see them pulled out. And I realized that this year when I was looking at the software line on the budget, it's it had our old things on there. It didn't have any of the office stuff. The office stuff was, I think, still under our retex of that. Finding a way to pull that out and get our invoices and making sure it goes in the right spot. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. Um, oh, for my edification with the IT consulting, is that like when we get help? Yeah. With our email? Yeah. So Barbara and I are and Like how much does that cost per... I mean, I guess like if it's going to be $200 for a 15 minute this is how you turn your outlook on and then maybe I should ask someone else. So it's not cheap and I do recommend if you have a thing that you think Jordan or I or anyone can help you with, try to do that first. But sometimes there are things like log on stuff that just isn't working, we have to go to them. Like we can't fix someone's log on problem. But if you have a question about how do I get this document to share with Jordan, then please call me or Jordan and don't call our team. I don't call every tech ever. I think you had him call in that I finally could like get the email to work, but yeah, because I was just being stubborn. But um, and I'm by no by no means a whiz, but like one of the conversations that we were having as kind of in our last check in was was like let's let's try to use them as efficiently as possible and train a trainer so they like we have somebody mm -hmm. or two people in house who are proficient enough and understand the guts of things that um, that they can they can help do some of that one of the things that um, is still kind of a blind spot that that we had brought up is that you know we don't have like back-end admin privileges for the Microsoft accounts and like even for just like housekeeping and, and triaging just very basic level stuff but none of the accounts have it part of the problem is it's all so new, we, we don't really know who should have it. And at the time, we didn't have a town administrator um, or anybody who was familiar enough with that system. But at this point, you know, I think it, it's reasonable to think that somebody should, hmm. should have the keys to that um, so that we don't have to make those phone calls every time. Um, and it'd be, yeah, 
so I, I would I would hope that like that that IT consulting is is a number for setting up like those types of mm -hmm. meetings where it's like okay we're gonna have you guys help facilitate us for a, an acute period of time and then out of that we have a very specific objective of being able to do it ourselves. Yeah. Who who made the request to increase the consulting to nine? Anybody here? To increase the no, I think I think that's what Tegan was saying that that um, that Sandra had had yeah. recommended those numbers relative to what she saw as expenses again, you know, from IT. I so we we should so we're, probably we're likely to go over this year. Is that the thing? Uh, I'm sure we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I pretty see. sure if you look at it, we've been going over what we expected. Yeah. Um, let me try to find that here. But in theory, next year, because everyone is going to be more knowledgeable in knowing how yeah. the things work, I, that it shouldn't be. It's another thing we can we can drop it down a little bit, and if we go over, we go over. Yeah, I don't know. Kind of see well, it like with the as of October, <laughs> which is one quarter of the way through the year, we had spent forty percent. This year of this year's budget. Yeah, and it and, and it would be good to again look at that like relative to what our subscription costs are for uh, for Microsoft. So uh, that's I think the Microsoft costs are coming out of it right now, and we need to move that around. Mm. We either need to move it around. Or we could also look at reducing those. Um, so we're coming up on. I, I guess that was. Uh, April-ish of this? No, it was probably later. It was there. April. Was it April? So and those are annual. Those are annual and you can walk them, you can walk the accesses back to the next step um, down, um, which is just the web-based one. It's cheaper than, than what the $24, $25 uh, a month for the, the full, full subscriptions. So we should have a conversation about um, who's using what features and whether or not we're comfortable walking them walking them back. That could be a significant savings. Hmm. Will you remember to take us through that at some point? Well, I think it'll come up uh, a little bit. Uh, we're um, planning on having a conversation. Kari, Tegan, and I are planning on having a preliminary conversation relative to the um, office staffing uh, okay, work good. and organization work that Kari and, and Tegan have been working mm -hmm. on. Um, and I think that will feed pretty naturally into okay. a conversation about what resources should be available for, for whom and then like, uh, and then also who has access to what shared resources. So before we finish like rolling out a shared resource thing, we have a better idea of, of what subscri subscription okay. levels everybody needs. Um, and then we can bring that back to, um, to okay. RB and just tell them the next time we are up for subscriptions, we'd like to roll them back. Um, okay. okay. Just going to put a little plug and say thanks for the Adobe account. It's been very helpful and I've used it in a number of different ways and I'm very happy to have <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> From all of us. <laughs> um, let's see. Where, what else here? Most of these um, Tegan developed. Um, under postage, I cannot for the life of me why I said to reduce that from 3,000 to 600. Sandra says I did on October 24th, but I don't remember why, and I'll have to ask her why that made sense to me at the time. It might have been something she recommended, and I said, sure, that sounds good, but I can't think why. Well, it looks like the actual was 500 out of a $3,000 budget. The year before. The year before. But now I'm looking at this year out of the 3,000 by Oct... How did we do this? By Oct... To the end of October, we had spent 47% of that 3,000. Well, I think... It, when did stamps go up? July. Yeah, I think but Barbara what... went right before and spent, like, a boatload of money on stamps. So that was money <laughs> for stamps? I guess some of it. I'm not sure I'd have to look <laughs> line by line expense reports again of the postage for this year. I didn't have, I had the last couple of years I didn't have this year. So they're all sitting in the vault waiting for us to use them, you mean? Yeah. 
She keeps them in the vault because she got so many. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Do we not have like a meter? Me like a meter to count, like through. It would be cheaper not to call my office to close, but <laughs> having a a Pitney Bow meter saves you. That you get to know, yeah. You and I can talk about pennies to you know, but I mean, yeah. you send out hundreds or thousands of letters. It's yeah, and all, and also time. Huh. I mean, you just print out. I mean, we do it. Too. You have to lick yes. all those stamps. No, well, you, you buy you buy the rolls, so you, it's like a printed roll, and you buy a printer, and it, you you yeah, purchase yeah. it through the software. So, yeah. like, if you wanted to buy a bunch in advance, you you could you could do that. You just print them out. You do the same thing, but you save the time of having to drive down to the post office and sure, sure, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not and the whole and the I'm whole bit. And I yeah, I, I think dude, yeah, there must be. In the, Negotiated pricing, I guess, right? It's Meters are cheaper. For yeah. Businesses, is, yeah, like 50, 60 cents versus 66 or something. See, I don't know I'll, the exact I'll come talk to you sometime and we'll work out before everybody buys more stamps. Uh, um, so that must be what I did. I looked at last year's and said, heck, put it at 600. Yeah. Okay. What and if you not, maybe because she bought a bunch this year, we won't have to buy as much. I don't know how much. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys think? Would you be comfortable knocking it down to that? I mean, worst case scenario is we just blow through our posted budget. So, uh, you know. I think it's okay. I think. <laughs> and I think our kids have really a lot. Yeah, and we have, it, we have 3,000 in the elections postage. So. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but that's, I mean, unless we... No, I mean, it's not yeah. going to be used for that, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's leave it at 600 then. Um, supplies, office equipment, these are the best guesses. Well, when you and I looked at our past receipts of all those things today, there was nothing frivolous or... <laughs> you know, I don't know. I thought that waste basket was pretty uh, no, extravagant. That was for me. That was for me. <laughs> hey, we just don't... Burn things in the <laughs> parking lot. When Andy's been very good, I let him burn things. In the oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Moving along. Anybody see anything there? You okay with buying an AC unit for five hundred bucks so that our office staff can work comfortably in the summer? And the server can stay as cool as it needs oh, to be. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. It was for the server. I, Barbara you're right. and I both were, spent plenty of time in the South. We can handle some heat, but <laughs> archival records and servers don't appreciate the heat to the same extent. Well, now that we've hired a callous guy to hang out in the office, I don't know. I don't know that he can <laughs> yeah, handle I'll the heat. <laughs> okay. Anything? Anybody want to comment on that piece at all? Payroll and taxes, I don't think there's a darn thing we can do about any of that. It is what it is. The best we can do is reduce the staff. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a talk with, um, I'm now on zoning. Unless anybody, did I run over anybody wanting to comment on anything? No, okay. To talk with John McCullough today. Uh, you remember, I'm not sure where, I asked him where that increase in his salary came from, and he said, I don't know, I don't want it, level fund me. Well, they were, it was, was it Jan? Was it was Jan. Advocating yes. for it very strongly. Yeah. John said he doesn't care, he's fine with level funding. Um, and he said it's fine to drop his expenses down to about 400 He said all he needs to buy, I forget, he threw some terms out stakes to put his peas on when he stakes out yeah, places. Nice. So I was thinking, well, why don't we give him 5000 for his stipend this year and drop ex zoning expenses down to 400 mm -hmm. Okay. Kari, you got all of that? So that actually gives us a decrease, a little bit of a decrease in that one. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's the big decrease in the assistant zoning? Uh, that was Jan. She said that she just really didn't do that much. She didn't think it, she was okay. worth it. <laughs> and she doesn't turn in hours to get paid now anyway. 
Fair enough. Amen. I did want to have a quick conversation about police. Um, you'll remember that uh, when we took office, we got twice as many hours of police time for the amount that was budgeted, and then they doubled their salaries on us. So we're now getting half the police time that we've always gotten. Um, it's been proposed at level funded here. I think we're getting away with half the police time. What do you guys have a thought about this? What do they do? Well, and it's complicated because so much of what they do ends up being meaningless. So, you know, <laughs> they go and they pull over speakers and the sign is tilted two degrees too far southwest. You know what I mean? The person gets off and judges expect them to knock tickets down. I think East Montpelier is pretty Traffic aggressive. tickets mostly yeah, is what they do. Yeah, with their patrols. So East Montpelier does But we could good also call teams. them if somebody was robbing the general store, right? Do we pay for that, or is that state police? I guess that's... We would, we would be calling the state police, and they would say, we're very sorry, but we're understaffed right now. So unless someone's been shot, we probably can't come out. So, um, no, it... Uh, I've so called them when there's firearms, and they don't come out unless someone's been shot. Okay, so it's mostly traffic stuff. It's mostly it's traffic right. stops, and really, they said themselves, their their hands are very tied as far as, you know, they could pull someone over for something egregious, and the judge is going to want them to knock it down, knock it until, you know, it's basically meaningless. So I think mostly what well, we do is... But, I mean, that's not a reason that they just don't pull people over. Uh, oh, no, when they do pull know. people over, if they it's, come out, they do. But. If there's a spot where people are behaving badly, and we put a, a, a cop out there for a week... Um, and then, and they give out a few tickets that usually slows the traffic down for a while. Okay. That's yeah. a, a, that's as far as I can tell is the main thing we use them for. Mm -hmm. Like Maple Corner, mm -hmm. right there on County Road. I know in our village, people can go through there 60, 70 miles an hour. Yes. Lovely. Yeah, um, and they've, they've been on Pekin, uh, uh, Pekin Brook too, a couple of times. I've, mm -hmm. I've run into them over there as well. But you know, I think. There's been a lot of conversation, obviously, for the last year about um, about speeding, and you know, I think if we're going to do it the way that you're supposed to do it and make adjustments and that sort of thing, there's, mm -hmm. there's limited conversation to be had around there. But the bigger issue is is paying for the time for these guys to be around in a very targeted fashion, and so you know, I, I at this particular year, it seems hard to mm -hmm. find more money to increase that. But I think if the mm -hmm. town wants to have an honest conversation about changing the behavior of people's driving, then it's going to come to funding more constable time yeah, uh, or, or more uh, sheriff's time. Well, and hopefully for, through the next year or two, we can get our signs, you know, especially on the back roads. They're really particularly restricted back there, you know, because our signs, so many of them aren't whatever is the current. You mean the flashing signs that no, say... No, 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 the sign that the speed limit sign has to be a certain size and it has to be at a certain oh. distance from the road and it has to be at a certain height. And if it's not exact, then them writing a ticket for the person going 70 down Pekin Brook is well, thrown I, out. They can still write them tickets for careless or reckless driving. That is true. I mean, they can, they can find ways to make it a meaningful exchange. Okay. But I'm hearing that we're not going to make any changes then. To how, many, how much time is that actually? Oh boy. <laughs> we were, it's like an it's hour. Roughly an hour and a half. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> because they, they were no longer getting the contracts for the state. There was something that had shifted, so they basically had to fund themselves through doing the patrols. Like they were able to offset their costs by whatever gig they previously used to have. So it, it went up a lot. Yeah, and it averaged out because it used to be what, like eight hours a week or something, but it ended up being like an hour and a half or four hours. I no, know. I think it was half the amount because they doubled the salary. They, they were charging the us thirty dollars an hour to, for their services, yeah. and then they came to us after the budget had passed and said, "Oh, but we're going to double your double our costs, uh, uh, double your costs." Yeah, and well, they started charging us sixty dollars an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so we said, "Okay, then we'll take half the amount of time." <laughs> so, there we are. 
All right, sounds like we're going to continue that for another time. <laughs> yeah. uh, animal control is level funded. Cole says that's okay with him. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. um, planning Commission. I did not call Jan, but maybe we should have a quick conversation about that interactive map. So this is one of the items we adjusted based on last by 3,000 to 3,000 saying we'll fund the purchase whether that happens this year or next. So, yes, and, and yeah. 3,000 is for on, the ongoing, ongoing subscription. That's right, okay. Um, do you guys want to see the demo? Do you want me to try to schedule that for the next meeting or can we wait till the new year? I'm I'm happy waiting till the new year. I I would like to schedule a demo. I'd I'd like okay. to take a better look, um, take a better look just at it just to see sure. it. But we'll purchase it without waiting for the demo. Is what I'm just it's as razzle dazzle as promised. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think it would be worth uh, probably bringing in the uh, webmaster as well uh, for for that. Um, mm. I vaguely remember um, buying a um, GIS subscription okay. this year to help facilitate some right. work That's during the disaster mm -hmm. yep. recovery. And it sounds like at the very least we would want to move this stuff over into this resource uh, and, and maybe either like make sure that we're heavily supplementing the GIS subscription or we might just be able to replace it entirely. Because um, part of the GIS, it was promised that like Conservation Commission can use it for some of their stuff, or roads can use it for some of their stuff. So if we are going to get a different mapping system, we should back off on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, let's see. Their expenses went up, and they want to $2,500 for their reserve fund. You guys okay with that? Do we have what, what their current fund level is at? So um, the, that's that's the, the column just before. That was the budget. So they got 5000 this year. Can we look at that? Is that what is that what you were asking? The the, the, well, the that, third column is that right, this reserve year's fund is for expenses related to increase uh, uh, revising the uh, town plan, right? And yeah. they're planning on getting into that this year. And so I guess my question is whether or not they have built up a balance. Oh. Sufficient to make a go at that revision. Well. Yeah, Jen was saying it had been underfunded, and so she wanted us to um, yeah to give it more this year. I'm trying. That's funny. I don't see it here. I got conservation commission reappraising. Huh. I don't see it in the special funds. Am I looking right at it and not? Curtis Pond Equipment Town Hall. That's odd. Why? I don't know why it isn't showing up in our list of special funds. So they didn't get it this year? Yeah, they got 8,000. Uh, no, wait, am I looking Five, at the right 5, line? 5,000. Yeah. Okay. So she's asking for half that this year. So the increase is coming pretty much entirely from the uh, interactive map. the mapping. Yeah. I don't know. That's a question for Sandra. Where the yeah. heck is the um, Planning Commission Reserve Fund? Okay. I'm really curious about that. 
reappraisal fund? Mm, no, that'd no. be listers. Reserve fund. I, I, I believe we've briefly touched on it. Um, um, a couple of meetings ago, but yeah, I still don't know. That, that's okay. I'm, I'm fine with it as it is. Yeah. Okay. Everybody else okay with that? Yep. Jamie, I can't see you, but I assume you'll let us know if you're not. Um, emergency, yep. ma emergency management. Um, Nick asked for $500 to buy uh, perishable food. The stipend was something that somebody suggested, and he said, well, you can do it, but I won't take it this year. Although, if we get another one, another emergency management person, they might take it. So um, we could zero that one out um, if we needed to. You guys want to buy $500 of canned goods for our emergency shelters? Well, I think they're looking at the long term, um, the long term foods that you can have in storage for a long time. That the MREs or whatever. That then, if they you know got to a point where we did not have an emergency and did not need them, that then they could be donated back within to the community via the food shelf. Um, mm -hmm. But it would be good to have small amounts of things on hand um, for our shelters if we needed to deploy them because it can be hard in a crisis situation and to go rob the Calais store, you know, East Calais store. It's, you know, if you have no means to get out of the community, it's good to have something, you know, maybe we can do with less than 500, but, and there may be funding streams somewhere, but it's a good idea to have it. Other thoughts on that? I have mixed feelings. I, in some ways, I feel like with three stores in town, having a closet full of what, crackers and canned soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be crackers and canned soup, but yeah. <laughs> No, I just, <clears throat> I guess some stuff would make sense. They would just need to be managed. Yeah, where, where is it going to be stored, I guess, is the... Right. How often is it used? <laughs> so we had, we had the shelter open last year at the elementary school. Um, and I don't know if they tapped into what they had. I think the Red Cross brought food that time. I thought um, the local people all, I, I wasn't here. That was at Christmas and I was away, but I heard that people just made stuff and brought it in. If the Red Cross runs it, you have to use Red Cross stuff. You can't yeah. use outside things. So that's, it's a cost that, you know, they do all the work and take care of things, but you can't use your stuff. What Including is, stuff that we bought? What if we? I'm not entirely sure the specifics. I just know Betty Copeland told me a little bit about this when it happened. What if we funded like uh, it, like an emergency town account for the stores? Now that we have like the East Callis store, yeah, and sense. and then we had and we have Maple yeah. Corner. I mean, then the only other shelter that we're talking about that we would have a reserve stock would be here, and then you're dealing with like inventory management and that sort of thing. But if we have, I mean, we, we had this kind like of discussion yeah. Yeah. with Nick when we were doing flood recovery stuff, you know, we deputized him with a certain amount of money that he could spend, you know, to, I, I think it's, it was part of, I don't know, was it, what was that part of? He, he could spend like $3,500 or something like that. But I, it seems to me like it, if we had a, if we split mm -hmm. that $500 between the two stores. Three. Three. Co -op. Oh, right, in the Adman Co-op. So if we split those between the tabs at the stores that could be used in an emergency, then we don't have to, it's not like a recurring, it's a, it only gets used if it's needed. And then we also don't have to do the, inventory management and rollover part as well. I would, I would suggest that they explore that and not tell yeah. them to do that. 
No, yeah. Well, no, and it's definitely cost. It's just considerably less cost effective. I don't know your prices, but mm. our prices locally are really high. So, um, but I think the likelihood. I don't know. It seems like we're having more and more events, but as of now, we haven't had an event where the one event that we had those of us in the other parts of town we do and then you know they had the red cross who was providing food up at the, the school so the other factor is we've got a lot of new generators we had a lot of places that didn't have generators so it didn't matter if you came here or there it was the same as at your house whereas now we have a lot of places that have generators so that they are yeah so we've got the maple corner community center we've mm -hmm. got here and we've got the school mm -hmm. that all have generators and can be used as emergency shelters and all have you know, sort of kitchen facilities right. where we could feed people. But what happened at Christmas, I understand, is several people came to get warm and get a meal and then went home. I gather nobody spent the night. Oh, no, we, at the school. Oh, yeah, people did spend oh, the night? my friend spent the night with his, he spent Christmas Eve with his two little girls oh. and his Asian father at the elementary school. Oh, okay, no. I'm misinformed yeah. then. No, yeah. because a lot of times in, in these situations, because people don't want to be away from their pets, so most shelters don't have places for pets, so people will go to get warm, maybe get something to eat, and then go back to their cold house. Well, and I don't think they had a lot of sleeping. Like, it wasn't the most comfortable sleeping accommodations at the school either. Like, I know my friend said his dad was on the nurse's office cot, and that was the nicest bed all me of them had. <laughs> So I don't know if that's yeah. a long-term thing to think about. Well, no, with the deploying of cots and those things, yeah, there was just, no one could get anywhere from anywhere, so I think that was a lot Maybe of we should be investing then in mattresses instead of food, if, if the Red Cross is going to bring food. Anyway, what do we want to do with this section, folks? We want to, it sounds like maybe we want to give Nick a little budget. Yeah, I think it's reasonable, I, I mean, but but not tell them it has to be bought for food. It's I, yeah, I'd be I'd be comfortable funding the five hundred dollars, but I, I think we should have another cover. Let's let's flag it for a conversation. I think there might be a more efficient way to to apply, even if it's an agreement with each of the stores to you know buy things at cost, or mm -hmm. you can even dictate what the things are that they want to carry in inventory, but then they can sell it after a certain amount of time. But at least. Yeah. At least it's just money that's sitting in a reserve account, you know, that that is easily accessed, and then we don't. Not a five-gallon bucket of dried pinto beans. Yeah, that we have to then, you know, that we have to, that we then have to refund. You know, like if we're not if we're not using it, if it doesn't end up getting sell this some nice militia food. Car, you got that one? Okay. We're sticking with the amount, but we're going to make the suggestion about using the stores. Yeah. Okay. What do you want to do about the stipend, guys? You I want mean, to zero that out? won't take it, but <laughs> I, I think that another person, if they were to do it, if something came up or, I mean, it's, it can be a tremendous amount of work, I think. You know, it's a pretty token amount for the amount of work that goes into it and probably should be there. So you'd leave the thousand in? Knowing that he's not going to take it, but yeah, probably. About 500. It's like 75% of the stipend for the select board. <laughs> How much cost benefit he, analysis. Uh, How much work does he actually do? Um, this no, summer, no, no. he did an insane amount of work, well, but it's so a fair everyone. amount of, um, you know, there's monthly meetings and updating of the, it's got to be pretty on top of the emergency plan. Um, How often does that change? This year, there's a big change. I don't think that it changes very frequently. That The other part is that he ends up being, I think, the primary point of contact from the state when things... Like when roads are closed. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily when roads are closed, but when there's a, when there's when a there's disaster, um, he ends up be, being one of the kind of key coordinators uh, with the state's emergency response team gotcha. um, and kind of offloads or off, uh, offsets the, the select board engagement at that level. Um, so it, I, it depends, you know, I, I would imagine that like the administrative load is, is going to not be as intense um, because he's done a lot of organizational work. Mm -hmm. um, but 
there's always the potential that there's a fair amount of hours that are going to be put in. Yeah. So. so, but what you're describing doesn't sound to me like any more than the Planning Commission or the Conservation Commission. Mm, they no. meet once a month and they do an enormous amount of work. Yeah. I mean, so, it, I think uh, if, uh, if we want to pull it out for now and Nick is good for going on for another year, then, uh, then we say great. Yeah, and I, then, I mean, it's not that I'm against paying them, it's just that how can you, why would we decide to pay him and not yeah. pay the others who are doing the same kind of well, work? Well, it's, it's like the constable or it's a, it's a higher burden. I mean, the planning commission doesn't have, I mean, the planning commission, it's an arduous and challenging job, but there's a lot of, the decisions you make as the emergency coordinator, mm. you know, yeah, I, I need I, to be good friends, and if they're bad, I mean, it's a lot, it's, yeah. it's a lot to be holding um, in an emergency, but, but he said he wasn't going to take it, so I'm okay for this budget, if you want to just, I don't know, would, I'd, I'd say, i say we pull it out, and we, Put a permanent asterisk in there, um, and as soon as Nick's <laughs> away from, uh, you know, ready to step step away for it or transition away for it, then we can add it back in. Well, or let's see what what we what the bottom line is. We might even decide to add it back in this year. Okay, mm -hmm. Kari, you want to take it out for now? Okay. We'll leave in the five hundred. Okay. How are we doing? Quarter to eight. I guess we can do a few more. Conservation Commission. So. Time to go. That's the vacuum cleaner. Oh. Uh, I found it the other day hung up in this chair yeah, right here. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> see, I find it like that. Donna says if you ever see it like that, park it back in the kitchen for her. Oh, I put it over there. I thought that's where it was supposed she to be. You there's a docking thing. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> um, okay, so with the Conservation Commission, yeah, they haven't had one, and I think they just, I, I'd gone to their meeting and they just kind of, someone takes notes like most of the groups do. Yeah. You're talking about the secretary? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Do other commissions have paid recording secretaries? There was a paid one for the DRB. We took that out. That's the only one I can think of. Yeah, I and think we can safely zero out. that out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, $200 in training. I don't know if they've been, doesn't look like they've been using it. There's no actual there. It's zero. If it's in um, for training, they... They can't, you can't apply it to other expenses. It has to be used for training, right? It has to be co oh, no. yeah. Oh, you mean, do they, well, they'd have to get our permission to use it for something else. Um, and we are um, giving them 600, well, we do have $600 for equipment. Uh, and 250 for other expenses. Uh, what about the green up? Jamie, doesn't the state pay for green up? Yeah, I have no idea why green up got put in there. We get a grant from the state that covers any expenses. And the Conservation Commission doesn't do it. You do it, right? Exactly. Okay, so we'll zero that one out. There, there is nothing. There, there is nothing. It is zero. Yeah, yeah. okay. But with the Conservation Fund, what is that used for? That took a... That's that's the main thing they do is um, that's what they were formed for to use that money to purchase land or development rights on well, the I land think, in some I cases. I think they were largely formed because it's a statutory requirement relative to having a town plan, isn't it? I'm not sure about that because I remember there was a fight over whether or not to form it, hmm. and I know because my husband led it. <laughs> I see. Um, and we didn't have to at the time, certainly. And I think they got $2,000 or something. And the point was to be able to conserve land. But if you look at their statutory authority, that's their main function. Is to... Um, oh, I see. Yes. And so do they go out yearly? I mean, do they have 
funds are they spending this amount well, every year on? No, it, it, it's a amount. It, it's. I mean, it's, Calis is so concerned. It, no, it, so it's a it's a fund end. that gets um, that gets you know funded and annually and, and you know amasses a value um, and then when there's opportunity for uh, buying land or um, buying development rights or something like that or offsetting development rights that can be used for it can be used for that um, yeah. so it, it's a it, it's a rolling balance and then when a project uh, manifests itself that would be worthy of you know expending the funds um, then they so it's uh, basically they like what the land trust would do or one of those yeah. it, it's so very they uh, usually partner with they'll usually with partner land, with land trust and other organizations yeah. that do that kind of thing so it's it's you know when they do it they need like twenty thousand dollars so they try to build it up slowly so that when an opportunity comes along they can jump on it okay uh, and I, uh, just looking at their report from last year, they were involved in um, establishing the shade tree preservation law in town, ordinance, I guess. Mm, I don't think it's an ordinance. It is an ordinance. Shade tree ordinance. Yeah, it, which was eventually the callous tree ordinance. Is it an ordinance or is it a policy? I don't know. They call it an ordinance here. <laughs> Um, they were involved in helping us with the subdivision review. <laughs> they, gave, they gave us a little training in that. Some tree planting. They did a fall foliage walk. They helped a lot with the shoreland zoning. They developed a curb cut ordinance that got rejected. And they're working on uh, surveying the list town forest. So they've expanded beyond what their statutory authority is, which is fine. There's nothing to prevent them from doing that. Right now, a lot of what they're doing is invasives. And so that's right. And they don't even mention that. that. Yeah. The things that they've really been focusing on. I mean, they've still been for properties, um, and they still would like to do things, but that's, they talk about managing town forests and invasives. But has there, but have any, uh, have any, has any of that work come out of the conservation fund or been funded out of that? No. No. Right. No. The conservation fund is only for the, the land conservation mm -hmm. projects. And one time for the Moral Law. And the Moral Oh, that's right. Yeah. They did. Crazy. That was unusual. Yeah. There's 39000 on the fund right now. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. So they do have resources. Yes, but that's not going to buy them much when it comes to land. If they have to, if if a project comes up, they've got what they've got, and that's what they have to use to jump on it. Mm -hmm. Given, given the type of year that uh, that we're having and uh, needing to find places to save money and the pressures of other issues in town um, I would I would say keeping that keeping that flat at 5,000 I mean I have a I have a hard time justifying a discretionary increase in funding of that budget to eight thousand dollars if we're not if we're not adding a discretionary increase to the planning commission reserve fund, which has been decreased from 5,000 to 2,500. I mean, I think there's a lot of, there's a, a lot of programs that need to be funded around town that take a closer look at how conservation and development and all of these things play uh, into each other. And mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate the presentation uh, that that Larry gave, but it definitely sounded like the the increase in, to eight eight thousand was was a discretionary request for this year. Um, and I appreciate it, but I just don't think that this is the year probably to be throwing an extra three thousand dollars in there. I agree with that. Agree. I agree. Okay. I mean, I do think the equipment that they had looked at is something that they can use and need, and I think having the mower is going to help a lot, being mm -hmm. able to help with some of the roadside invasives um, in a timely manner. But. Okay, so we're taking out the 600 for secretary. We're knocking the 8,000 to 5,000. 
What about the Lakes and Ponds newsletter? Now, I know I noticed again, I suggested dropping it. You remember we had a conversation about that. Larry's vision was we were going to print these things and mail them to every resident. Yes, and then collect them from the recycling bin at the post office. And no, <laughs> all the people, all the old people wanted the hard copy and all the young people wanted yeah. the email version. That's how it <laughs> But maybe it could be that if people wanted it, or there could be a certain, um, I don't know. Well, that's what we talked about. We talked about printing it, putting a few copies because around it town. Because it isn't conserving to kill a lot them. of trees and have just paper get torn out. So I had just dropped uh, 500 out of it, but maybe I just made that number up. They asked for f for fifteen hundred. I what think you... in particular they want to make sure they mail them to people who have waterfront property since it applies to maintaining right. right. those yeah. properties in safe, sustainable ways. Yeah. Okay. Um, so is it primarily for postage or also for like the printing? Do it's they go to a special in printer? Colors, so okay, so fancy schmancy. Yeah. All right. They had a grant to do it several years ago. You remember he passed around samples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was very attractive, but And anyway. if they get another grant, they can do whatever they want. Oh, I guess we know how Tegan feels. <laughs> <laughs> I like the man. Like, I love, like, you can ask me, and I throw away, like, ads and stuff, but I like all the mailings. Okay, what do you want to do, guys? Anybody have an opinion? I mean, I think it's nice they, like, you know, the people who appreciate them really appreciate them. I think we should leave it at either 750 or 1000 and let them decide the best way to spend it, whether it's printing and having them available at tech stores or mailing to pond from properties only. And putting it online, probably mm -hmm. combination. Yeah. Yeah. OK, pick a number, somebody. Uh, Jamie, you mentioned 750. 750. I think 750 is doable. Even. I'm okay with 750. I think okay. they should be able to create and print even if it's glossy and schmancy looking. Doesn't give them much postage. Do they send them out once a month or once a year? Like no, just one, once a year. One, I think they just did one for the year. Hmm. Yeah. It'll be a right. They used to do two a year. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Should we move on? Should we do the swim committee. Mark Mark has um, managed to get the dock price down by what a couple hundred dollars because he talked them. He found out that we don't have to pay the taxes as a municipality. It's not even a couple. It's about two hundred dollars. I think. Yes, two forty. So uh, I may have misunderstood, but I thought that the discussion last week was we agreed to reduce the. The dock number to twenty five hundred from five. It was five thousand previously. Because um, I remember the discussion being around. Well, let's ask them to fundraise the balance. But and I didn't remember it that way. So yeah, no, that you, was me. I was pushing. <laughs> for, well, because it's something to that there are whether businesses or people of means that it seems like someone in the vicinity might be willing to purchase it. Or sponsor it. Right. Donate. Donate. Maybe. We've been asking for a lot of donations lately for that. We've been raising money for the dam. We've been raising money. We raised money for the raft. And I'm feeling like this dock, it's a really important community resource. Yeah, I guess that was my my impression from the presentation. It, it, as much as I'd like to find like another way to do it more cheaply is that it, it sounds like the current state of the dock is like a safety issue for running the program mm -hmm. from it right and so like uh, the program is already suffering from a <laughs> an existential issue of being able to find somebody to uh to actually run it mm -hmm. um and then you have a secondary existential problem of like having a dock that is in need of replacement yeah. and um and if it has to be pulled out or can't go back in next year then yeah that makes it even more challenging to run a program and, and so I appreciate it needs to be refurbished but the town is as we learned with the interest for the bond that everyone voted to it's close to 700,000 and in Curtis Pond 
as much as we like to talk that it's a resource for the whole town, it's primarily a resource for the people that live in the area. So, I don't know. My kids learn to swim there. It's the only swim lessons around. Yeah. That doesn't have an instructor? Well, they, they have, have been, yeah, they, yeah. They've been having a hard time finding yeah. certified kids. I think this year they were like bare, they were barely able to get one in, in like they in, in they time. They didn't, but they that's didn't? because they didn't have a committee. Oh, I see. Nobody had appointed the committee. I got you. So nobody was working on it. This year's committee started working on it, and they've not yet found an instructor. And the trainings happen like January or February, so if you don't have a person in February, they're all gone. So it's the and that's the, the doc's primary uses for the lessons? Well, it's a lot of it, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's a, it, it's a community access to, it, it goes in right by the, um, uh, by the kind of park area, the parking area there. It doesn't, um, you can get in by the steps. It's just the dock makes the swimming lessons, and it's more fun. You can jump off. So it's by the swim area? By the swim it's area, it's fun. There's just those little steps you can go in. Yeah, the steps that we just put the railing. Yeah, so we just put the cute little railing on. Yeah, so it's $5,000. And, and you're, include, you're inclined to ask them to raise the entire amount? I just think there are, I think it might, a business or someone, there might be a means to get it sponsored. It's just, we're already, like every individual is already putting in with the bond and we did the railing with the last um, Yeah, that happened thing. to town. And I, I, you know, just being from the other side of town, it's not, people on my side of town don't, don't get to use it. There's not parking. There's not, you know, so everyone goes to number 10, but. I would agree with that. Well, why don't we leave it at 2,500 and they can choose to fundraise for the balance of it or carry it over for a replacement mm -hmm. in the next year. Um, you know, I, I, I would agree with one of the things that struck me about the, the staircase situation is it was being used, the rationale was, you know, accessibility, et cetera, et cetera, to the ponds. It's like there are other swimming areas. So why don't we look at a proposal for each of the swimming areas and consider equitability? Um, and nobody seemed to bring anything up at the time. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know why number 10 doesn't get more, uh, more attention or have a dock or a raft or something like that, considering how many people use number 10. Um, and, you know, maybe this is an opportunity to see 2,500 there and uh, another conversation be had next year about having another other infrastructure being placed at the other swimming areas. Now we still have with Curtis Pond, the road crew is still gonna be putting in that floating the swimming raft thing, yes? Did that ever get put in this summer? I don't yeah. think it did. Oh, yeah, I definitely. thought it did. It did. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. I mean, Mark has um, got the dock. He's ready to go buy it. But um, if, if we don't give him the money, he can't. <laughs> but he wouldn't be getting the money until... <clears throat> Well, yes, but he could enter the contract if he knew that he had the money. So, uh, personally, I'm inclined to give them the money. <laughs> I do think it's an important community resource, and I do believe a lot of people from East Callis go over there, but maybe not. I would say that. Okay. That's where I would lean to, I think. And Jamie has... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I tend to, I, I really do see both sides on this one. Um, I, I see that Curtis has gotten a lot of attention recently. Um, and, but I also do think that 
you know, if you looked at the statistics of kids who do this, have gone through the swim lessons over the last 20, 30 years, it's really kids from all over town. Um, and spending a lot of time at the swim area, it's really a wide range of people who swim there. Um, and I think that the dock makes the swim area safer um, and more appealing. And uh, yeah, I, I support the full five, although I fully understand the hesitancy. I will say there weren't listens this year, and I think we went to swim there once, maybe twice. And I know the weather sucked over the summer, but we definitely went to number 10 a number of times, and we didn't go to Curtis. And part of that was because there were no swim lessons. And part of the reason, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot to do. So but there's sort of park. It's very limited parking, so if you don't walk to it or live there, you know, the parking's very restrictive. Yeah. And so it's... During swim lesson time, it's usually okay. It's just later in the day when it warms up. Because during some lesson time, it's shady there and it's very cold. All right. <laughs> no one comes yeah. I have an alternative for proposal. It's ten thousand dollars, but it has to go in, or it's five thousand dollars, but it has to go into number ten. <laughs> I'd still say no. <laughs> <laughs> but at number ten, no one would want to because I think they like, you know. Yeah. I mean, I take number ten is great. Okay, so it sounds like we've got two who want to pay the five thousand, one who wants to split the difference, and two who don't want to do it. Have I got that right? I'd be okay with leaving half, and then let's see where we cut. We can go back. Let's see where we can squeeze everybody else. I mean, I want to squeeze everyone fairly. Okay, so now we've got two. Would you be okay with that? I'm fine with moving forward. I, I think that's definitely a place we could go back to. Uh, no, are you okay with leaving 2,500 in there? In that line item? Yeah. Okay. I think that's what we've, that's the sense then that we've got at this point. Okay, everybody? Twenty five hundred. Thank you. Um, are you guys okay to keep going? This is an unusual meeting. We're gonna we can go back, come back to it next yeah. week. Well, I um, yes, Donnie, he's been up since midnight yesterday. Well, <laughs> yeah. here's, here's what, he's driving me home, and I want him to not go off. Sure and we do not have guardrails. Uh, you know what? What I'd like to suggest: let's finish the general budget. We're pretty close to the end, and not yeah. going to highway. All right. Okay. Okay, that takes us to town hall. Um, let me see here, what can we say about that? Didn't John say you could cut picture frames? Yes, I've mentioned, oh, moving the generator. I will tell you that I had a conversation with, oh, with uh, John McCullough on the design advisory board. You know, the design advisory board wants the generator moved. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot to put in there. It's a lot of work and expensive to move. Well, not only that. that, they don't have regulatory authority. They're advisory only. But that's what they want. Um, oh, so we were, it wasn't even like a requirement that we had to... They, they don't have that authority. Oh, okay. They okay. will if we pass the zoning as, as it is now. It, the zoning will be changed to give them that authority, but currently they don't have it and they can't. So it's an advice to us, and it's up to us to whether or not we want to do it. I discussed it with John, who's on the design advisory board, and we both agreed that it made sense to just ignore it for now and maybe do it in a year or so. Okay. The, the moving the generator would cost, uh, I think it was about $2,500. Mm. So, and meanwhile, maybe, yeah. maybe they'll build a cute little yeah. fence around it and everybody yeah, will be okay with it. Privacy screen. They're, they're, they're well, John screen. said it's a, it becomes a um, traffic hazard if they do that. I don't know. So if you're all right it's with it, we'll just put that one aside. It becomes a guardrail, which we need on the side <laughs> of the road. Okay. Um, Yes, uh, you notice we don't have anything for acoustic improvements in here, mm -hmm. and we do have something for picture frames. Um, so John and I discussed the picture frames. John's got a bunch of maps. He says, ah, zero that one out. 
I can buy some frames at a second hand at an auction or something. We'll be fine. I think he said garage sale. Gra yeah, he did. You're right. At a garage sale. And even if we don't frame them, we can put them up like that. And they'll still help with the acoustics. My eyesight's not that good right now. Um, and in terms of acoustic improvements, I mean, I would love to buy the ceiling. <laughs> but I don't think we're going to do it this year. Do you guys want to put something in there for acoustic improvements for this year, or do you want to put that one off? He suggested it was more chairs, I thought. He said, no, what he said was putting the chairs here had made the biggest difference. Yeah. Bringing these down instead of just all the wooden ones. And he's going to work, uh, he and Toby are working at screwing the floor down. Apparently, I don't know. It doesn't bother me, so I don't. I, I'm yeah. not a, a person who can judge this. Same. Yeah. Well, and I think just with the things that they've done with hanging things in the chairs, and they've made a difference. Yeah, already. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to do some more, but I'm not sure this is the year. I, I think that's fair. I agree. Being on Zoom, I can attest to it still being pretty echoey in there. Um, but I think there's more incremental progress that can be made for your cheap that we okay. can leave it blank. So should we take out the $300 picture frames then? Yeah. Per John's yeah. suggestion. Uh, Town Hall Reserve Fund. Do we want to put $10,000 in that? How much do they have in it now? Yeah. $500. Oh, that's what they're done. 500 Now. So the audit says it wouldn't include this year's 10000 that was budgeted. If you can, someone can refresh me, because I can't remember the friends of the town hall when they make money from programs and plays and things that happen here. Is that Does any of that come back? Yes, but town. not until we use the reserve fund they to. Made much money this year. Yeah, because it's too cold. We, we have to insulate, and the reserve fund is being built up to toward fixing those things. Uh, so we can yeah. only use it in the summer right now. Now, is this one of the buildings that Scott had applied to do the energy audit on? Mm -hmm. So they might come in and do some insulating. No. No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, they might, we might be able to get some grant money for it. I'm not sure. Can so the 10000 would go to what? 5500 Oh, no, but what are they? It's going to be the guy use it for insulating, in or I mean, what does it go to? I was going to say six. Keep it the same. But Ian's asking I'm, what is it going to be spent on. Yes. And Winchester and I didn't have any answers today because that was the friends of the town hall. Yeah, oh, I'm saying it, it'll probably be spent on things like insulation and, and you know, other projects to, to fix up the town hall. So it's sort of a chicken and egg thing. Until they fix up the upstairs, they're not going to get much income. They'll get okay. it in the summer, maybe. Yeah, maybe bring it back down to the 6,000. Okay. Six. That's enough to do something. Jamie, okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Insurance, I don't think we can do anything about that. Long-term debt, I think that is what it is. I'm do the debt. Tax abatement. Why do we need money for tax abatement? Is that to replace what taxes are abated? It must be. It must be to make, make up when we tell somebody that they don't have to pay as much as they were assessed. And that only ends up being $500 a year. Oh, it looks like it was I was just so many houses were down there. It was 2100 It's going to go down a lot. It's going to be pretty Actual hard for 12 FY 2023 was 21, 21. 21. Yeah. Well, we'll say no one at this point has requested an abatement since I've been in office. So, I don't 
We had one, but I guess she withdrew. When was that? Uh, yeah, well, it was. Uh, it, they, it, it didn't end up being an abatement. I think it was just a correction because there were two different parcels that needed to be adjusted. For the yeah, there was that. There was somebody over on um, Worcester Road. Anyway, that, are you thinking about Jane Johnson? Is she the one? She inherited it, and she couldn't afford to pay the taxes uh, on it. And is that something we should be discussing in an open meeting? Uh, uh, yeah. It's that, not that. Good point. Uh, in any case, uh, should we just leave it at 500 then? And then if Sandra wants to tell us, maybe we can, that's a question for Sandra. Is there some yeah, I mean, it looks like it wasn't, it wasn't budgeted for, and, uh, and then we had the $2,100 in expense, and then maybe Sandra is recommending that we just put something in there to cover whatever expense may come mm -hmm. up, but it seem, seems reasonable to put $500 in there. Yeah, okay. All right, um, there's a Woodbury Fire Department meeting tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody planning to go? I was gonna go. You're gonna go? Yeah. If the roads are good, I don't have yeah, great tires, but if I can scoot down 14, I can okay. do it. Okay. Right, I was trying to figure out when the East Montpelier meeting was. 14th. It's on the 14th, and they've sent us some documents, so. I'm going to put on the next agenda that we need to talk about the interlocal <laughs> agreement. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I probably will. So will all of you please look over that interlocal agreement because it's time to renew it mm -hmm. and we need to think we're going to have to negotiate with them okay at the next meeting and we'll talk about it at the next meeting so are we all going to the one on the 14th then usually we all go it's the big one it's the one where they do the budget okay. and the east montpelier people all go and if so yeah, yeah okay. i think it's been a pretty long-standing um, I mean, if you can't, you can't. No, it's no, on a no, Thursday no. night, and Jamie won't be able to go. Yeah. But it would be good if the rest of us. I, I should be able to go to that one. I'm going to be traveling tomorrow, um, so I won't be around for the Woodbury one. Okay. Um, I may go to the Woodbury one, except I have to be at the airport at 9.30. Mm. So yeah, I, can I can go to that. That's, I will not be at the Woodbury one. I might go for an hour. That's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'll try myself off. Do we, so with the interlocal, is it... Negotiating with the with East Montpelier or no? It's a three-way it agreement, right? With with the fire department, East Montpelier, and us. Have we had any? We haven't had any indication or conversation with East Montpelier Select Board about or board members about changes that they want to make or see. I mean, I, I got the impression that they. It's. I think they were fine with it. I mean, I think they were talking like we could just, yeah, I think, you know, it's like the one third, two third, you know, if they dissolve, you know, how do they divvy up the assets? You know, what rights the fire department has to do their own business as they yeah, see fit I, and yada, yada, yada. I so. think that's right. I think they were fine with it and ready to sign it. And we said, wait a minute, <laughs> we just found out about this tonight. We need time yeah. to read it. So, I mean, it, it seems so. pretty basic. and. You know, it's, I think, been in place for a fairly long time without a lot of... I think we had come back wanting to change things before us. Oh, uh, okay. Which is why it was, but I mean, I don't know, I read through it. Okay. Well, we'll talk about this we'll talk at the about next it. meeting. Yeah. Uh, and we'll go through the highway budget, and um, I don't know if we can finalize it at the next meeting. If we can't, we may have to have another meeting to finish it off, because we've got to get it done. We've made a lot of progress, though. We've made a lot of progress. And uh, when we see the bottom moved. line, maybe we'll be happy. Do you have any sense, Kari? Are we getting down into the single digits? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I bet you we pushed into the single digits. Yeah, I bet, you we I bet we're at 8.5%, uh, I think, after considering the, like, the, yeah. The I, mean, I think we found, I think we just probably went through in the general. I think we put, it was... Close to 40, 4,500 or more than that, a little bit more than that. More than that yeah. Yeah, a twenty thousand is one percent, so that'd be a two percent. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we got to yeah. another twenty twenty thousand, but it was. Yeah, I was hoping we would, but maybe not. 
Yeah, but I'm, we can probably defend 8%. So, but, but we're going to have to have a conversation about how we're going to do that, too. Well, the governor's already putting out statements about how things are. Well, that was all re referring to schools. Yeah. So, okay, anything else? Well, there's else? always revert, reserve funds that we can continue to chip away at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take it out of the conservation. Oh, God. Okay, anything else? All right, meeting adjourned.